Here we go. Welcome back to One Take Tonight. He's Reese. I'm Dan. What a week it's been. Annual White House Correspondents Dinner took place on Saturday. An event CNN describes as the one time per year that the establishment elites in the political world and media get together to settle their differences and support one another. Or as anyone with a brain describes it, an everyday occurrence. It was a great night. Joe Biden made a whole 10-minute speech in which he didn't even read off any cues in which he had to pause or laugh or change who he's looking at. Pretty standard for a president of the United States. When asked what he thought of the speech, Howard Stern was quoted as calling it existential, awe-inspiring, and the greatest human performance since the Sermon on the Mount. Not the only electric gathering of folks this weekend. Students across the country are protesting the war between the Israeli Defense Forces and the terrorist organization Hamas. When asked why they were doing this, a student at Columbia University in New York was quoted as saying, finals are coming up and my dog ate my homework, no longer works in 2024. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! The Los Angeles Lakers were eliminated from playoff contention last night after a gentleman's sweep against the Denver Nuggets, likely ending the LeBron era in Los Angeles. As expected, LeBron blamed his team's lack of success on injuries and said, at the end of the day, it's just basketball, after going down three games to zero. When a reporter asked how he was so reliably terrible with PR, LeBron said, I owe it all to my new PR consulting firm, Christy Noam Consulting. <laughs> the best in the business. I couldn't get through that one. That was... Uh... I, I didn't even see the punchline in that one. The attendees for the roast of Tom Brady were announced on Sunday, and the list includes legendary teammates Julian Edelman, Randy Moss, Rob Gronkowski, and his former coach Bill Belichick. When Tom was asked why he didn't invite Jonathan Kraft to attend as a roaster, he was quoted as saying, Who's Jonathan Kraft? All right, we've got a great show. Blogs of the week, Around the Bay, What's in the News, and For the Brand. Producer Reese, cue the music. Welcome to Blogs of the Week. Producer Reese, you're writing about your boy Nate Diaz as well as Stockton. It's kickback season. Spring is here in Stockton as well as Nate Diaz going against Jorge Masvidal at the beginning of June. What do you got? Dan, it is indeed kickback season. We have almost exactly a month away from the big fight. We got residents out here getting their garages ready, getting their lawns ready. Kickback season also means really, really hype nights. Ones in which maybe Danny Dials might make his way up to Stockton uh, for June 1st. We'll see. Um, speaking of big sporting events, uh, 89th annual NFL draft this weekend, uh, heard Bill Belichick did well. Dan, we know you're a big, Bel- uh, big Belichick guy. Uh, describe Belichick crushed it, man. He kind of put the whole show in his back pocket. He's, this is his first time in the media. So it was just very different to see him in that element. He had a little, a little help on the hair up top. Uh, he had a little, a little bit more thickness up there, so I was proud of my guy. He's looking damn good. And he was on the Pat McAfee show, which is – they do a really good job. Pat's done an outstanding job. And uh, it was just fun to see him kind of putting the whole thing in his – like I said, in his back pocket. He was just you know on the draft board. Uh, he was on his laptop while all the other guys were just like – talking amongst themselves he's on his laptop he's like doing analysis the other guy's just kind of joking shooting the shit and bill belichick is just doing what he does being the best at what he does if he's head coach if he's you know out hanging out with with babes that might be 30 or 40 years younger than him maybe even 50 years younger than him or if he's uh, you know an analyst and an emmy award-winning broadcaster bill belichick's the the best of the best i'd love to see it i'd love to see it all right uh, a couple things around the bay here r.i.p temple nightclub uh Tough one, producer Reese is a you know a former uh, San Francisco uh, lower class rat who would probably go and scrounge around Temple Nightclub, closing after uh, 17 years, if I'm not mistaken. Probably uh, sad for you and your boys Tony Batista and uh, Hypey Souls. Yeah, uh, rat indeed. That's probably the best way to describe our culture back then. I do. I will say back in um, 2018 or so. Yeah. The Sacred Heart Boys of Sacred Heart Cathedral. There was two spots to go once you turned 18. One was City Nights. And one was Temple Nightclub. Unfortunately, Night I've never Club, been yeah. to Temple Nightclub, but Tony Batista has been there a number, number of times. He's probably shut the place down. Probably got kicked out a couple of times. I don't know, man. Um, probably should have lied and said this, you had some epic story about Temple Nightclub. That's a bit of a miss on your end. So I need a little bit more from you moving forward pretty series. Will do, man. Will do. Yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely maybe, an electric spot. I haven't been there in a few years, but... Uh, I, I at clubs when they like bring out the bottle girls and they like have this thing is just kind of cringe. Yeah, have you ever seen that? That's cringe. That's <laughs> so cringe, cringe is, right? AF, I don't know, bro. Cringe AF. Yeah. Uh, even if I had, I, you know, even if I had the the proper media mogul money that uh, that uh, I I might espouse to have with rock and Sartoro suits, kind of yeah. cringe. Never really got that. Never got never got the club culture. But uh, I I never got the culture either, man. Um, speaking of uh, other things around the bay, uh, yeah. we got a. 
New, yeah, yeah, I was scrolling through Instagram the other day and saw a clip of a yeah. bunch of people in ape costumes on horses uh, by the water. What's in the neighborhood, just Rivers? up the road, man, up the road from the Richmond is, here. Is it? By, uh, it was by Fort Point. Yeah. It was, yeah, Planet of the Apes doing some sort of promo. It was <laughs> the first time I saw, well, it was clearly Planet of the Apes, and I was just surprised in the comment section. People were like, what yeah. the hell is this? Like, what, what, what is happening? I was like, dude, like, Planet, like new Planet of the Apes movies coming out in like two weeks, so. This is clearly what it is. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, it was a little gnarly. It's. It, I like that the. I like that uh, movies are doing more, rogue or like gorilla. Like, I guess it's a bit of a pun here, because this is G O R I L L A S, and then like G U G U E R I L L A marketing with like they had. I don't know. There's a horror movie a couple years ago, and there was just like some gal behind like the backstop, just like with that scary face or what have you. Might have to clip that in and find that somewhere. I can't remember the movie. But, dude, getting people in movies is hard these days, right? It has to be. I, I, I yeah. have been in the movies like twice in the last five years, so. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't I'm, know, I'm a little I, disappointed people didn't know, the, didn't know Planet of the Apes. Well, it's it's just you know, based on comment section and, uh, I don't know, it was like SF Gate that posted it, but uh, it was it was kind of funny. Yeah. Apparently the movie like takes place or some of the storyline for Planet of the Apes in general takes place in San Francisco or maybe one of the, the right. former ones. But there's been like 200 of them. They yeah. go back to the 70s, right? <laughs> yeah. And then they like Long just keep making they, they just kind of keep making them. So I, I, I don't know. I, I, uh, I'm not a big Planet of the Apes guy, but that's all right. Downtown First Thursdays. Um, mm-hmm. San Francisco trying to re- revitalize downtown. Uh, yeah. The clubs, some clubs shutting down, some bars shutting down, a little bit of a resurgence. Uh, this was announced earlier this week. What do you got on First Thursdays, Producer Reese? Yeah, you know what? It's kind of uh, a sneaky, sneaky spin-off, sneaky uh, copy of Oakland's first Fridays. You know, got to give cre- uh, credit to Oakland for doing that first. But um, yeah, no, it's good to see. You know, downtown's not really electric these days. Me and you were down there probably a couple of months ago for APAC and some other stuff we were filming down there. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's not that, not as electric as it used to be. So um, it, it, I will say though, Santa Con was hype. Me and Young Emilio were yeah. holding it down over there. That I've never was, been a down. Only... I've never been a huge downtown guy in general. I uh, I just don't know that scene yeah. like the that that little corner from like Union Square through like Soma, down through the yeah. ballpark. I just don't know as well. I'm a big like North Beach Marina guy, but that yeah. The, I, I, maybe it's because I used to work down there and it was uh, I just didn't have a much positive association with it. Um, it's a it's it's a little overrated in my, in my opinion as a San Francisco. But it is the yeah. one area of the city that feels like a proper. Like you know, high rises and you know rooftop bars, what ha- what have you. Yeah. The ho- hotel bars down there are, are pretty sweet. They they got a line. Shout out the line franchise. Those are those are cool. I don't know if you have ever been to the line producers, but uh, never been. That's a good that's uh, good hotel chain. They got one in DC, going in LA. They got a few others. So that's, I don't know what's gonna funny. happen downtown, producers. I hope uh, hope it gets figured out. Hope we'll more people see, come. Man. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, last one here. California has introduced new speed camera laws. Uh, Dan, as someone who has had a negative experience with SF traffic cameras, give me your thoughts on this. Don't like, know if uh, this is actually established. I just saw a headline on it, and I thought I'd jump on it because I absolutely hate yeah. everything about this. If you, if I fucking see a a speed trap camera where it's like you're just setting people, like you're just basically printing money and like you're just extorting yeah. the public, this extorting the taxpayers for yeah. hard-earned dollars that you didn't even – if someone like – if a police officer pulls you over for speeding, you're going 80 and a 55, it's like, all right, like fair and yeah. square. You pulled me over. Like you used – it was an actual human that did it. But now it's just like you're putting up speed cameras. This is, it feels dystopian. I hate it. I hate everything about it. And uh, yeah. it's it, – this is the uh, – I die on that hill. It's bananas. I still haven't even paid my fine from like a year ago and I never will. Uh, if they want to come <laughs> and knock on my door, I will take out my machete and – hack at whoever you know comes into my abode out here at one take media headquarters so it's like i'm very no speed cameras never when i run for san francisco mayor in 2032 that's probably going to be the number one platform i'm taking them all out yeah dan 2024 for mayor man that's uh no not 2024 i need more time i need like eight years all right what's in the news coming up next What's in the News is brought to you by our friends at Sartoro. Summer is here. Want to get as much attention out of the bar as producer Reese tired of buying off-the-rack shoes that don't fit you as well as you like? Check out our friends at Sartoro. The fastest-growing online men's fashion brand is changing the suit game with their incredible selection of suits, colors, and styles. And the best part is it's all done online. Use their digital tailor feature to pick out the perfect suit option for you. Use promo code 1TAKE10 for 10% off your first order. Sartoro, the suits, the suits, the suits. All right, first up in What's in the News, we had ESPN article about LeBron losing. And they had nothing at all. This is hilarious to me. They had nothing. They had so many quotes from him from his post-game press conference after Game Three. 
Everything except for it's just basketball. And it's just basketball. At the end of the day, it's just basketball. Uh, which was like clearly the only line that was interesting. So this is David McManaman, uh, ESPN staff writer, who's, I think he's done it. He, you know, a lot of folks at ESPN individually have done a good job, but they're clearly just like so pro LeBron. It kind of drives a bananas. It's like, this is a quote from LeBron. You're supposed to have anxiety under pressure. Uh, uh, you're supposed to have anxiety and pressure or feel the pressure. That's what it's about. That's what the postseason's about. Uh, you don't have to ask the individuals the question and see how it is. It's hard for me to be like, this is what a guy feels like. I can't do that. I'm not a minor here, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. So he's talking. There's so many quotes in there that don't mention it's just basketball. It's just ESPN. You got to at least acknowledge that this guy who you love and have like made a lot of money with in collusion with almost said a terrible quote and you got to call him out and they didn't do it. Sad. And that's why, that's why media outlets like One Take Media will come in and usurp establishment media like ESPN. Producer, your thoughts. That's right, man. Yeah, it's just an interesting thought that LeBron has probably one specific guy working for him to scrub every single cringy thing he said on the That's internet. the other you thing, know, the he, 2018, when he said the exact, you cannot find the clip anywhere. I tried to find it. That's why I said, pretty serious, you got to download this clip now because yeah. it's going to get scrubbed. It's, yeah. gonna, it's just basketball is yeah. going to get scrubbed. You said the same thing six years ago, and you uh-huh. can't look it up. 2018, you can like find like quotes of it, but not the actual videos. It's wild. <laughs> No, I, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a big conspiracy theorist, Dan, and I, I think, you know, one of these days, you know, man, man in suits will approach One Take Media, you know, asking One Take Media to take down their most, one of the most recent reels in regards to Dang. his quote. You know, we might get so. some intimidation. Some folks might come out to Stockton and say, hey, producer East, we know that you have the login details to One Take Media. Could, could happen, bro. <laughs> might say, hey, we hear, we hear yeah. you got a new cat. We'd hate for anything bad to happen to that new cat of yours out in Stockton. That's, that's facts. But I'll have to give you a little shakedown. Yeah. So, yeah, LeBron, I mean, he goes down uh, four games to one. You know, we call that in basketball a gentleman sweep producer. You know, the Nuggets let him get one victory. So it's interesting, the end of the super team era, it feels like, in the National Basketball Association uh, with mm. uh, Kevin Durant losing, LeBron losing. And then uh, Steph Curry was never – he was the beneficiary of his super team, but he never mm. participated in it himself. He never kind of free agented himself out there. But it seems like the Clippers are going to lose too. They've, they you know, they've got a lot of, you know, James Harden and uh, Russell Westbrook, and these guys have been uh, recipients, I would say, of the the benefits of of doing super teamism. So it's an interesting time. Uh, but ESPN, uh, you got to include that in there. Uh, Cal Poly Humble. Uh, this was an interesting article. Officers. This is from CBS News Bay Area. Officers clear Cal Poly Humble buildings occupied by pro Palestinian demonstrators. 35 arrested. Arcata, California, dozens of people who have been arrested. And the occupation of several buildings at Cal Poly Humboldt is now over. School officials announced Tuesday pro plus engineering center. Demonstrators had occupied two buildings on campus last week and refused to leave. The headline that jumped out to me is, what is Cal Poly Humboldt? I didn't know if there was a school I've never heard of that. Bro. Never heard of it yeah. up, up there. It's like up in, it, up near like Oregon. Is that different from Humboldt State? Is, it sounds like I don't it know. Is. I it's, think it must be. It yeah. has to be, right? Yeah. Because it sounds like the headline, they just put together two different state schools, Cal Poly right, and yeah. then Humboldt. I was like, <laughs> I was, uh, I mean, yeah, there's, there's been some schools making noise this week, but uh, yeah. I was like, there's a Cal Poly up in Humboldt? I've never even been up to Humboldt myself. I, I don't know much about what's going on. There's rumors of a, a company trip up to uh, uh, Eureka at some point this summer. Oh, but, um, that would be electric. That, uh, and by company trip, I mean me. Sorry, producer Reese. But... Uh, yeah, I don't know what, uh, what's going on. I feel like in some ways to get away with this protest stuff, you got to have a little bit more of a brand than like Cal Poly Humble, uh-huh. right? If yeah. you're like an elite say, university. you got to be like, on the map, bro. you got to be a little bit uh-huh. more on the map. Like, you know, come on. Yeah. Who, whoever's doing the PR for the, for the pro Hamas protesters or what have you, like, you know, just, yeah. just take that into consideration. I mean, right? at SFSU barely made the cut. I saw that they were starting one of those Did camps they- in the – <laughs> no. Do they? Yeah, they do, do they have? We're gonna have to get Young Emilio down there. <laughs> Emilio's probably participating. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like at SFC they just be like, all right, like what are we doing? Like you guys are just following the trend here. Like I don't. I don't it's interesting, like the brands of the schools. That I, I gotta write a blog on this, but I feel like the elite brands for schools yeah. are like, like who wants to go there anymore? That's like not a nerd. Like it's kind of being overrun by like the dorks yeah. and the nerds as opposed to like. The large, yeah. I think it's like you got to go to a large state school now. Even if you're a top student, it's just like cooler. Oh, for sure. We've had this conversation before. Yeah, the hot girl schools, Dan. That's, exactly. That's like this ain't happening at University of Arizona. Like there ain't no like, you know, 
What are we yeah. doing? What are we doing, boys and girls? Yeah. U of A, Chico State, San Diego State. You know, <laughs> give me, give me the hot, give me the babes, man. The ten out of ten. The gals, I, and it, it is an interesting occurrence with the end of the school year and finals and whatnot. It's like, oh, yeah. That was kind of my joke in the monologue, but anyway. Uh, there's rumors that we might be going up to Berkeley on, on Friday to do some investigative journalism. <laughs> so I hope that happens. Rumors. Rumors. Yeah. All right, for the brand, then we'll wrap it up. For the brand, we got our next order of Sartoro suits. Slightly delayed because there is going to be a custom liner producer, Reese, that uh, pretty hype about. But Will Sandy did get his suit and he looked electric. Uh, I think we still need that side-by-side photo with the Sandys and me and producer Reese with that hashtag Sartoro, man. That'd be pretty awesome. That's right. That's right. Yeah, uh, you know, as a man who has a Sartoro suit with a custom liner himself, I'd say they're pretty electric. But these are going to be more electric. So, you know, I can't, I can't speak on what's, what it's going to be. Oh, I have, have I not told you what it's going to be? You can probably guess, but it's, it should be pretty cool. Yeah. If, if it actually comes to, comes to fruition. Uh, Andy's, like, trying to get some guy yeah. and, I don't know. Some, I, th- like, I think random, you told me, but I, I, we never said it some, like, on, on camera. Some random part of Asia, there's like some guy that does that, and that's uh, it's chaotic, but uh, hopefully it happens. Soon. One take filming, uh, uh, film showing slash Will Sandy Doc. Yeah, we got the film festival in two days, and Will Sandy Doc not going to get shown. Sad, but uh, that's all right. Yeah. Rip and Rosie t-shirt slash fundraiser didn't happen, but... Yeah. The Dog Surf World Championship is happening, so that's a good thing. Let's go. Let's That's go. happening, Let's and go. the film festival is still happening. Both things are still happening. You know, it yeah. d- didn't exactly come together. Maybe as well as, you know, I have to do some little math here. Maybe. It's all right. Yeah, r- rumors of producer Reese possibly suiting up. Well, possibly. Well, a little different to plan. A little different than plan, but that's all right. What are you going to suit up for? That's all right, man. Uh, you know, wetsuit. Wetsuit. My, my producer Reese might rent a wetsuit this time around. We'll see. We'll see. That's Instead facts. buying one like you did last time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we're going to do it this year. I asked them if they're doing it live. I don't think they're doing it live. So I think uh, we'll, exactly. we'll see what happens. Exactly. Dark Surf World Championship is one of our favorite events. We, I will be. I will at least be in attendance. Mm-hmm. Pawn skim. Yeah, so Saturday double feature. I just hope it doesn't rain. I hope it doesn't rain. Today is, uh, yeah, early in the week here in uh, last day of April. I just hope it doesn't rain on Saturday, man. That would suck. We're going to go up to Palisades and back down to Mavericks. And, um, yeah, we need some good weather. So, Pray to the way that God's are, are the chances like pretty high, or is it just going to be like a little bit of moisture? Yeah, you know? I don't know, man. It's tough to tell. You never know. Yeah, I guess. I'm know. just basically I'm basing it off the the Apple Weather app. So this isn't exactly the most in depth yeah. research slash analysis you've ever seen in the history of of meteorology. But uh, it better not yeah. rain. I would be I would be upset. Uh, and then yeah, do do thirty one this weekend. Uh, kind of a big big celebration. So that's hype. Um, yeah. You know, 31 years ago. Uh, you know, I'm not a big birthday guy. A legend was born. Not a big birthday, a not a big birthday guy. Years. Not a big birthday guy, but, uh, you know, a lot of folks yeah. just kind of making a big deal out of it. So it is what it is. You know, if, yeah. the people, if people want want Dan to do something for his birthday, then uh, you know, we'll do what we do best. We'll get out there, we'll mix it up in the marina, we'll have some fun, have some espresso martinis, yeah. maybe shoot some sartoral content, maybe uh, do a short film on, you know, what it means to be a marina bro. We'll see. We'll see if that actually happens. Today we released... Maybe our worst reel in the history of reels, the least engaged with reel ever. Yeah. Terrible idea for me, but I think at the same time, it's kind of funny. I, I liked it, dude. I thought it was creative and like, you know, good, a good way to promote the blog. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in support of promoting blog. Yeah, I'm in support of pr- promoting the blog as well. I, I think in theory, it's, yeah. a, it's a good idea. So I kind of liked it. So Yeah. Um, it got like two likes though, last time I checked. So yeah, a little bit cringe. Like yeah, a little bit cringe. Pretty bad. Yeah. Just overall... Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know how to square that circle. Do we just keep going the same thing? Do we do the uh, the post? I think we just want to drive more traffic to the site in general instead of just the the uh, the social yeah. media accounts. So people, people are like, it's funny because our, our our actual handle is at onetakemedia.com right now. And then I'm like, the people are like, oh, like, what's your website? I'm like, oh, it's onetakemedia.com. They're like, <laughs> oh, it was? Like, really? I'm like, where, where do you think we get the name from? Like, we, that's the name of the website. That's the name of the brand. Like, go, like, check out the website. Yeah. That's where we have all of our stuff. So. That helps us more than uh, you know, liking on social media. I find that sad. How how, 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 how <laughs> like, like what's one take media com? It's it, like it's literally, literally yeah. our our uh, have our our site. All the work that we've done in the last you know, year and a half has our common sense just degraded to that level where we have to ask what our website. I don't know, brother. I don't know. But thanks for joining us for this episode of One Take tonight. We'll see you <laughs> next time. <laughs>